Okay, uh, Kenji. Hi. We are very happy uh, to have uh, Kenji, who is going to tell us about genericity versus symmetry and progress report on the use of the virtual fundamental chain. Yes. Yeah. So thank you for introductions and thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk here. So what I want to talk is a kind of a part of our project about this virtual fundamental chain techniques. And this virtual fundamental chain is, as, as you know, is a kind of te uh, technique we want to cook up some numbers or some structures from moduli spaces, especially in the case of homotopy curve. And uh, in many cases, that this process is uh, in a sense uh, automatic. You don't have to worry so much that, 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 that it's a kind of, once we cook up some moduli space, then it's about your fundamental chain is obtained automatically. However, in some cases, it is not so much automatic. And that is the case when the symmetry is uh, involved. So as you know, that this uh, transversality is something related to genericity. So gen generic object is transversal. But at the same time, uh, generic object is not so much symmetric. So the issue is that uh, if you have some, um, if you want to have some symmetry, then whether this symmetry is realized after perturbation is uh, non-trivial. And there are many different kinds of symmetries. And usually, if you look, consider this modular space itself, we can just draw the figures, pictures, and you, you see some uh, symmetry, like some equality or some group actions, or uh, many, many kinds of symmetry on the modular spaces. And from this uh, uh, picture, you guess some equality or some actions or some properties on this uh, structures or uh, numbers you get. And you expect that this kind of um, equality is uh, um, proved using this uh, um, techniques. But then what you need is just you have to um, part up so that the symmetry is preserved. And uh, as I wrote here, this this uh, keeping the symmetry while you part up is not uh, obvious. So there are various situations we meet this kind of problems, and that in a sense kind of uh, uh, frontier or borderline part of the of the techniques, and uh, and many of these kind of uh, symmetry symmetric you know, equality is used in, in, in for many applications, including mirror symmetry. So I want to explain. Uh, mainly today, two kinds of symmetry. One is an uh, uh, exterior group action. That is the case when you have regroup, regroup G acting on this uh, sympathetic manifold preserving simplex structure. And you have a Lagrangian sum manifold, which is uh, G invariant as a set. Uh, then uh, this is one case. And the other thing is something called a forgetful map and cyclic symmetry and a few related symmetries. Which I will go more, uh, which I will explain later in a more precise way. And to handle this symmetry, I think there are basically two different ways used by several people. One is this uh, homotopy method. So this homotopy method somehow replaces exact symmetry by some kind of a symmetry up to infinite homotopy. And to, to cook up some good notion of the symmetry up to infinite homotopy is, is an issue. And then also we need to work hard, sometimes in very hard in homological algebra, to show that uh, this symmetry up to infinite homotopy is good enough to uh, have uh, to have our uh, operations or those things as a required property. So this is a homotopy method. And this, this, this somehow simplifies that. Uh, uh, work in a geometry side because uh, in many cases symmetry up to homotopy is easier to realize. And there is a direct geometric method so that we want to keep this um, perturbation itself as symmetric as possible. And as I said that there is a difficulty to do it direct geometric method because the genericity and the symmetry is controversial. So I want to explain these two methods in several um, uh, situations. And in this, in this first extreme group action is, uh, actually I want to explain more on the second point, but this, this one is more clearly, we can explain these two methods. So let me recall what about the situations. We have this uh, regroup group G, which acts on a space X and uh, simplex manifold X and Lagrangian sum manifold. And the goal is we want to obtain this uh, equivalent AVT category. So that object is equivalent to Lagrangian and this, uh, all this uh, MVD structures, blah, 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 is in a sense G equivalent. 
And uh, typically, we want to find this equivalent. So if you have a single Lagrangian sum manifold, you have this equivalent for the homology group on which uh, you have a UVD structure. And this equivalent for the homology group should be related, usually equivalent to homology by certain spectral sequence. And if you have a pair, you have this equivalent for the homology between two Lagrangian sum manifolds. So that's, that's a kind of goal. And uh, I want to first mention this homotopy method. I think this, this goes back to uh, Paul Seidel and Ivan Smith. I think it's kind of Z2 action based. And recently, these people like uh, Hen Hendrix, Lipschitz, and Zaruka use this kind of method. I, I'm not so much sure what I explain exactly it's the same, but basically, what, this is what they are doing. So suppose you have these two Lagrangian summon hole. Then I, I want to cook up this equivalent Lagrangian flare theory. So first, we consider this flare chain complex. And, uh, and uh, to define flare chain complex, you have to define boundary operator, you need to fix some perturbations. Let me write it C. I don't want to specify which perturbation we take. Typically, we take Hamiltonians for almost complex structure. And the point is that C is not necessarily G equivariant. As I said, that if you require C to be G equivariant, it is harder to achieve transversality. So we forgot this G equivariant. So we can suddenly define flare chain complex in a situation, in the usual situations. Then suppose you have an element G of the group G. Then you, I want to kind of send this uh, Fourier chain, element of Fourier chain complex to the element of this Fourier chain complex by G actions. But since this uh, action C is, is not uh, G equivalent, so this G, G star is a chain map, but uh, one is this uh, chain, chain complex obtained by C, and the other is a chain complex uh, uh, obtained by G of C. So this is, not a, uh, are, this is not the same. The domain and the target not the same. But as, as usually known, that this free uh, chain complex up to chain homotopy is uh, uh, invariant of the uh, perturbations. So you have some chain homotopy equivalence. So you compose it, you have this map phi of G, which is a chain map from this uh, chain complex to itself. But the issue is that this map, this, 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 this one, which is sent G to phi of G, is not a gene action, which obviously is that this, this chain homotopy is very much ad hoc. So you compose this phi G1, phi G2, it is not equal to phi G1, phi G2. So that's an issue. But then, again, we can use the fact that uh, this, this uh, um, uh, uh, free, free theory is invariant by pat perturbations and the set parameterized spa parameterization space of perturbation is uh, com contractible. We have chain homotopy between these two maps. Let me write it H, G1, G2. And then, but this, the story does not end here. So you have this three element. Then you have some kind of a chain homotopy between chain homotopy. So you have the three compositions. If you first apply this here, they have this uh, map, phi G1, phi G2, D3. Then this, this chain homotopy is, is a kind of arc, which joins two. And then you again do this process. You have this phi G1, G2, D3, you have this chain homotopy. Then, then in this second case, if we first do this for this uh, two, you have this chain homotopy between phi G1, G2, and phi G3. Then you do it again, so you get this another arc. So you end up some rectangle of, uh, of chain maps. And uh, this is uh, contractibility again means that there exists this, um, uh, uh, this homotopy of homotopy which fills this rectangle. So as you can easily imagine that this process does not stop here. And you can go up to infinite homotopy. You have something like a, the next stage is Q, who was kind of higher dimension homotopy and homotopy, and they're all consistent. And it, so, we, we, so one can define the notion of something like a, 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 that the infinite homotopy action of the group G. And so you have this chain complex on which this group G act in this kind of way. And then, then we can think that, okay, this uh, infinite homotopy action may be good enough to get the uh, equivalent flare homology. And I believe that this kind of thing is, is done by these people. I'm sorry, I, I didn't read it in complete detail, but this is a kind of a basic idea how we replace actual G action by homotopy G action, infinite homotopy G actions, and then we can define equivalent free homology. And I think this kind of idea is worked out. And, uh, but uh, I think th those people I just quoted before assume some rather restrictive assumptions like uh, monotonicity or exactness. Mainly, I believe they don't use virtual technique. 
And as I said, that this, uh, um, that is this C I use for this, uh, I, I mentioned about the perturbation parameter is in a sense uh, uh, quite arbitrary. So we can just use uh, uh, abstract perturbations together with this technique. And this seems very likely that we can do it in a complete generality. But uh, I don't know how much we need to work more on homological algebra because uh, the work to do this virtual technique already has a lot of homological algebra. And this infinite homotopy things has a, has, has a huge amount of homological algebra is used, like infinite category types things. So if we combine them, I, I'm pretty sure I can do it, but uh, I don't know how much complicated the homological algebra one needs. So this is, a, this is the homotopy method. And there is another method, which is a direct geometric method. So, so th that is something I'm working on. So you consider this beta, which is an uh, element of H2. XL. And then we consider this modular space of holomorphic disk together with this mark point. So this is L, the holomorphic disk which bound L. And of course, this homology class of U is assumed to be beta. And then if you, so this is this modular space. And you see this modular space itself, and we assume that G is, uh, J is almost complex such as G equivalent. Then obviously this space has a natural G actions and this is compactification also has a natural G actions. Uh, so, um, so the, but the issue is that this modular space as usual is singular. So the problem is whether we can put up this spaces in a G equivalent way I and mean, while keeping G actions. And that is a, a kind of harder than just to have this uh, homotopy G actions. And, uh, but something I, I, I can say is that the, you know, this, this modular space usually lo locally has a finite dimensional reductions. It means uh, something called a Kranich chart, a Kranich model. And uh, something I can say is that if you can perform this uh, finite dimensional reduction process in a G equivalent way, then we can use this uh, various techniques which is developed to, the, to study equivalent cohomology. And we can, we, can, we can use it. And there are several different methods. One can use the uh, so-called Borel constructions and one can use something like uh, uh, differential, uh, I mean, equivalent drum theory. Or, so, so there are several different ways, but I think all, all, all works. And the hardest part is to, to do finite dimensional reductions in a G equivalent way. And why it is not so easy to do so, is the following thing. So finite dimensional reduction, you, you have these equations, nonlinear Cauchy equations, and to have a Kranich model, you take, you relax these equations to something like a, d by u is zero modulo some finite dimensional subspace. So this is something like, a, I, I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. This one is, this one tends to zero one, right? So this one is something this guy gives and you take some finite dimensional subspace and then you relax this and then, then you get some, some, some manifold. So that is this uh, finite dimensional reduction techniques. But of course for this, this association from u to EU, this should be G equivalent. And this, to make this is a G equivalent is actually highly non-trivial. And, and if you look this, uh, I think it kind of asterisk in, in the paper uh, I, I wrote with Owo Taono in asterisk. And there are several, we do it in, in some particular case of toric manifold and we spent very much a kind of very heavy technical argument there. And that, that is a kind of problem. And the difficulty is the following things. So, so uh, to, to, to obtain this EU, the, 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 the difficult case when this source curve, so you have this U which goes from sigma to X and this sigma is unstable, can be unstable. So you have the stable map, which is an element of this modular space, but the source curve may be unstable. And uh, somehow we need to kill this automorphism to obtain this uh, finite dimensional space. So that is the, one main part of the this finite dimensional reductions. And the usual way uh, we and the many other people use is just to add marked points to the source curve, something like, like this. So th th this one is, this, these two is components are unstable. So we add a marked point so that it became stable. The issue is that the adding marked point almost always breaks symmetry. So you have this kind of, for example, this uh, S2 is invariant by Z actions or like S1 actions. Once you put this mark point, then S1 no longer acts. So this process to kill uh, automorphism 
usually breaks symmetry. So that, that is a kind of serious, uh, serious point. And the solution is the following things. So, so, so we, we want, so the problem is you have this one-stable curve. And the, the, the difficulty of this E of U is that uh, for the unstable curve, the usual moduli during one pole theory does not work. But there is something like Arkin stack, and there is some universal family, which is an Arkin stack. It's not a dream manifold stack. And, and we can use this Arkin stack, actually. And first, first, first one I need to do is just uh, define differential geometric analog of the notion of Arkin stack and prove that even in an unstable curve, we have this uh, universal moduli space in the sense of Arkin stack. And then try to use this, 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 uh, this, this um, that, that's something I am doing, and that, that, that's, I, I wrote uh, two papers about it. And uh, um, one paper I, I, is, is, uh, is mostly finished, and it, 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 it's, it's pub, mostly published. And uh, that, that is about this, this kind of trick. And uh, I'm writing the papers how to use this uh, local uh, Kranich model, the equivalent local Kranich model, to cook up this um, equivalent flare homology. And I, I, I almost finished it, but I, I need to write 20 or 30 pages more. And, and so, so, this, this problem, I think, is OK for in complete generality. So that is, that is about this exterior actions. But I want to spend more time about this forgetful map things. So what is a forgetful map? So we, again, we consider this moduli space. And so you have this uh, U from disk. So this is like a disk, or it's, a, it's, it's a compactifications. And then you have this XL. And you have homology plus beta, and the picture is something like this. And you have homology beta. And one, uh, one uh, important uh, thing is that uh, you have a map among them that's called a forgetful map. So this, this guy at the moduli space has a K plus one mark point, and we want to forget one of the mark points. You have the sigma and the G0, ZK, and the sigma to G0. So we have got this K. We, we want to forget this mark point. So this is a forgetful map. Of course, we need some something because this. this after, after this, the sigma, this may not be stable, so you need to shrink something. But that, that's a kind of established things. So the issue is the following thing. So we want to put up these two, we want to put up these two moduli spaces so that this perturbation is compatible with forgetful. So this is a kind of symmetry, and to put up uh, in a way compatible with forgetful map. That, that is somehow a highly non trivial issue. And, uh, and so I want to explain why we need this kind of compatibility. So there are, bit, uh, at least there are two important things we want to establish. One is the uh, unitarity of the, and the other is the device axiom. So I want to explain this two more. So what is unitarity? So unitarity of infinity algebra of a category is that there exists E unit. So that this, all, this infinity operation is zero, except this one. So this is just a kind of X times D E X. Is some sum. So, and, and E is, uh, is, is the boundary, and all the higher operation is just zero. So, this is called the unitarity. And this unitarity is actually very important in a whole story of infinity algebra or category. And uh, at, so, there are two, at least there are two important points we need to use this, uh, weak, uh, this unitarity. So, one is a notion of weak bounding cochain. So, what is the weak bounding cochain? So bounding cochain is something like B element of this odd order, which satisfies these equations. And this is something like an uh, infinite analog of molar Kalton equation. And this is a kind of basically the theory which controls the deformation theory of uh, infinite algebra. And, uh, but, but, but somehow, in, uh, we, in many cases, we need to relax these conditions so that Right hand side is proportional to the unit. So, you, so we require it to be zero, but you have this just weaker conditions. And this, this, this is uh, important in several applications. One is that this, this, this has a kind of more chance to have a very defined player homology. But in the mirror symmetry, this, this is very important because this, this number C is actually, this, this C, right? this, is, this coefficient is actually under the of potential. So in the case you, you, your mirror is not a manifold, but it's a random Ginsburg model, then you need to use this uh, weak bounding cochain, not bounding cochain. So typically this is the case of toric manifold, but in many other cases you need this weak bounding cochain. So we have to do this uh, 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 weak, uh, weak, 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 more important. And you know this, this, uh, this E, 
unit is here. So you need, you need unit to go to, to do this land of Islam model. So this is the first thing. And the second point, we need this uh, unit is so-called Yoneda embedding. So Yoneda embedding, I think appeared in last talk already, but you have this infinity category. Then, then, then we consider this category of infinity module of a C of omics and something like that, light infinity module. Then there is a, a kind of infinity functor which, which goes from here to here. This is called the Yoneda functor. It's a kind of infinity analog of usual Yoneda functor. And the Yoneda's theorem says that this is embedding. And in an infinity case, it is embedding up to homotopy equivalence. But then uh, you, you remember the proof of Yoneda's theorem. Then the basic idea of proof that it's embedding is to use the unit, identity morphism. And uh, I, I think, we, so we can cook up this infinity analog of Yoneda embedding with Yoneda functor without using unit, but to, to prove it is an embedding, we definitely need unit. So that is to, and the Yoneda embedding is actually very important in, uh, in many things which appear in this uh, you know, symmetry and this entity category. So these two are kind of very basic things which we need this uh, unit. And I want to go to this next thing. I, I'll go back to the unit later on. So the other thing is this divisor axiom. So divisor axiom, there is an analog, uh, divisor axiom existing in of Witten theory. In that case, we use this second degree homology class. But Lagrangian theory, we consider this first order cohomology class, P. And then the divisor axiom is uh, this, this equality. You have this, so, so, so this, this MK beta, is a contribution of this, uh, of this, of this, this is pseudo homology curve of homology class beta. So you, you consider this kind of things. And this is beta. And you count this, you get this operation. So MK is in a sense decomposed something like a t to the power of beta. MK beta. So you, you take this each, each individual piece of this MV operations. And then if you insert, this uh, insert this uh, one degree classes in, in various places. So you have this K and you have the K plus one places, you can insert P. And you take the sum. And the sum is just the, 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 this operation without B plus this uh, uh, boundary of beta, that is this one, that is the one degree homology class cap B, it's a number. So this is the device axiom. And if you know that the gram witten theory, I think the device axiom is something like alpha, I don't know. A is homology plus alpha is gromophyton x1 xk alpha. Right. So this is a usual device axiom of gromophyton theory. And the reason this, this satisfies, it looks very much similar to this. And you just uh, kind of um, naively think geometrically, this is a kind of obvious statement like this gromophyton cases. Uh, but I want to say that this, this is actually more delicate than Gromovitian theory. You know, Gromovitian invariant is actually a cohomology level thing. So it's, it's already invariant of perturbations. So we, we don't not really need to care about the um, choice of perturbation to prove this kind of things. But this uh, Lagrangian flare theory is a chain level theory. And uh, I want this equality to hold in chain level. So this equality should be a kind of chain level equality. So xi is just a chain and this equality is not up to homotopy, but it's an exact equality. So that, that, that makes this device axiom more delicate in a Lagrange flare theory case. And I want to mention that device axiom is important to study family flare homology and to understand the relation of this family flare homology to rigid analytic geometry. So I want to elaborate this point more. So we consider this theta tori. And the theta tori is something like a lambda star divided by d. So lambda is something like a Roland polynomial ring. It's a Novikov ring, so you have a rational, irrational coefficient, but you can just take this, this case. It's a formal Roland polynomial ring. And the lambda star is just lambda minus zero. Then we have this z action that send y to t of one. And this quotient is, I think, a theta tori. And that is very important in a rigid geometry. And you know, in the usual cases, the tori is just a C. C. Hmm? 
c divided by z plus z, right? This is the tau, right? But uh, in a, in a, we, we can we need to go to c star divided by z, and this is kind of annotated tau, right? So you have, you have a map from x to e of x, and in a, in, in our case, uh, we cannot we cannot do. Oops. We cannot uh, go in this way because you know if you, so so we want to do this kind of coordinate change and then then you know so this 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 is a kind of y is equal to t of y but then if you go to x and x is equal to x plus long t but unfortunately long t is not contained in our logical frame so this this equivalence does not make sense so we cannot do this the same way so so this is actually impossible. And actually, this is related to geometry, but I mean, free homology. But somehow, so to 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 go to to go to rigid geometry, we have to do this coordinate change. And uh, this coordinate change, y is equal to e of x, is actually important in studying family free homology. And we observe it kind of while we are doing this uh, in a, in a case of uh, toric manifold. And uh, yeah, so why why this is why this is the case? So we consider this. Um, Lagrangian sum manifold, and then we call that is H1 of L. And as you know that uh, if, you, if, if you deform Lagrangian sum manifold, this H1 is a parameter. Basically, you know, in the neighborhood of L is a cotangent bundle by this Weinstein's neighborhood. And the first cohomology class has a closed one form, and the growth graph of closed one form is nearby, right? You have this L, and you have this uh, alpha. You know, H, H1 of L is closed one form. This is the graph of alpha, so this is the L of alpha. So you deform by, by element of H1. So this, then, then suppose that this batch number is M, and we take we, we choose coordinates, you have this X1 to Xm. And then uh, actually the deformation parameter of free homology is not this X1, correct deformation parameter is not X1 to Xm, but this Y1 to Ym, so Yi is exponential of Xi. And this is actually a correct parameter to deform Lagrangian flare theory, and this is very similar to the case of rigid and geometry. And uh, this, so this change of variable is important in a family flare homology. And uh, so, so far it is. So um, I can explain very, 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 uh, quite, quite a bit. So we, we consider this L of A. So it is something like L, and you have this uh, L of A. It is a graph of this cross bound form. Then now uh, we, we, we consider this, uh, we compare this. Free homology of this L and free homology of this uh, L of A. And then this corresponds to the coordinate change. And some simple coordinate change is this yi goes to t to the power ai yi. So this looks very much similar to the uh, coordinate change appeared in the state to right? But this, this change is actually what, 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 what occurred in the free homology. So, so, this, so this is kind of how free theory of L is related to L, 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 A of L. So we need this, 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 this thing. But of course, then we can do it in this y coordinate. But if we do it in x coordinate, then what you get is this thing. And again, this long t is not contained in this L lambda. So at some point, I thought that uh, one might need to extend Novikov ring, including long t as a kind of formal things. But it, it, it doesn't seem to work because exponential long t is, t is a kind of difficult relation to put in algebraic way. So, Probably this exponential is very much transcendental. So, 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 so any, anyway, I want to, I want, I need to use this uh, yi coordinate. And this uh, change of variables from x to y is uh, possible because using the device axiom. So, why it is? So, uh, so I want to, uh, so I, I want to deform this uh, infinity operations using this b element of h one. Then, then the, this is a formula. So you insert uh, arbitrary many b uh, among these z's and just take m. So this is kind of m plus k plus something. And this is actually a definition of the deformation of infinity operations. And then if you do this deformation, then you take this again the part of this data, and then you construct this guy. Then you can easily see from divisor axiom that it is equal to this. So we have this this parameter here. So this is the, this equality is exactly this device axiom, almost equivalent. I think it's equivalent. So what it means that here b is x1 to xn in this coordinate, 
then if I, y i is e to the power x i, and if the boundary of beta is written in this uh, h, I should, this is h homology of z, but same coordinate, then you can just say this is something like a monomial, Roland monomial of y i. So if you use the uh, device axioms, you can, you, you can kind of uh, realize this deformation of uh, players and of this infinity operations just as a monomials of y. So this is very nat natural. So, so you have this kind of, so th th this is a kind of proof that this is the, this family of uh, operation is rigid functions. So, so for this to work, we definitely need device axiom. So that, that, that's, I think is a very important role of device axiom. Okay, so now uh, there are two more things I want to discuss. That is a, a cyclic, one is cyclic symmetry, and the other is a symmetry between input and output. So what is a cyclic symmetry? So cyclic symmetry is a kind of following things. We consider this uh, Poincaré duality on Lagrangian sum manifold, this guy. And the cyclic symmetry is exactly this equality. So you just take this MK of this uh, K uh, homology class and take Poincaré duality with X zero. Then if you can cyclically rotate, then it, it coincides after sign. And if you just see this geometry, you have this, this moduli space. And you can, you can, you can kind of take this uh, uh, permutations of uh, marked points. And this cyclic symmetry you can observe is exactly follow from the permutation of the marked point. So as I said before, kind of geometrically, this kind of symmetry is obvious. And also this device axioms and also unitarity are all are in a sense, um, if you just think very frankly and very um, um, kind of casually, then everything is obvious, this kind of symmetry. So, so this is a kind of something expected. However, uh, if we try to realize this cyclic symmetry in a, after perturbations in a rigorous way, then this is a, actually highly not to your business. And the last symmetry is symmetry between input and output. So that, that's a typical thing, is, important thing is the following things. So suppose you have this, uh, suppose you have this Lagrangian sum manifold, or maybe category, and we have a map, a closed open map called a closed open map that goes from, uh, actually this is quantum cohomology, quantum cohomology of ambient X to the hosted homology of this infinite algebra or infinite category. So this is, a, this is a closed open map. And there is another map, which is called the open closed map, which goes from, uh, Hosted homology of uh, infinite algebra or infinite category, and it lands on a homology of the ambient simplex manifold. And uh, these two maps actually plays, uh, I think, is a very important role in a, in a mirror symmetry and its proof. Uh, I don't want to explain why it is important, but this, this certainly is very important. And also, it has a lot of application to simplex geometry itself. And uh, so, I want to say that duality. So, the duality is the following thing. So, this we consider this hosted cohomology. And then this is known to be dual to Hoxie, uh, I'm sorry, Hoxie's homology is dual to Hoxie's cohomology. And we use this Poincaré duality of Ramanian sum manifold to define this dual. So, but this is the general algebraic fact. You have a Hoxie's homology and Hoxie's cohomology and this infinite algebra has a duality, then this is dual. That is one thing. And of course this uh, homology of ambient space and the cohomology of ambient space is dual by Poincaré duality. And the claim here is that the closed open map is a dual to open closed map. If we use, so the bo both sides has a duality. So if you use the both side, then you can say that this closed open map is dual to the open closed map. And that is this um, uh, symmetry. And uh, this symmetry in the geometric sense case is related to the following picture. So we consider this Lagrangian sum manifold, and we consider this format disk. We have this z0 to zk, k marked points. And then to define closed open map, we have this, this marked points, this marked points, which is, which is in a kind of interior marked points, right, lies in the interior of the disk, w. And this is the input. And also, all other uh, marked points are input. And this particular z0 is an output. So this is a map, you have this kind of chain of, I'm sorry. So this map, you have this chain of X and then this home of chain of L, K tensor, 
chain of L. And this is the host shield, host shield code chain. So this is a, this is a closed open. So in the open closed map case, you, you then, then, then the, you use ex actually exactly the same picture, but the difference is here. Here, W is an output, and G zero is an input. So 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 this uh, duality between closed open map and open closed map is in a sense obvious from this picture, but uh, you have to kind of you know you have to change exchange the role of input input mark points and, and the output mark points. So I think this is duality between closed open map and open closed map is something geometrically or intuitively obvious thing, but you need to, to realize it or to rigorously establish it. We need to kind of, we need to find some perturbations or anything like that, which is symmetric by the change of input and output. So that, that, this is a false symmetry. So there could be more symmetry we, that uh, we can work out, but this full symmetry is one very important symmetry we need to establish in this uh, whole business. So, so, so this is the symmetry I want. And I want to explain kind of how much we can do uh, using this bunch of things. And the first thing I want to say the following thing. So we use a geometric method. And then this full symmetry, unitarity, device axiom, cyclic symmetry, closed open, open closed duality in drum model, we can realize all at, at once. Uh, but uh, in the case we have a single Lagrangian sum manifold L and embedded Lagrangian sum manifold. I, I, I'll go to the other case later on, but in a case of single embedded Lagrangian sum manifold, we can, we can realize this four symmetry one at the same time. Actually, I wrote this kind of papers eight years ago and uh, it's published, but uh, probably I, I, I would like to rewrite it more using kind of more recent writing, which is more detailed about bunch of technique. Maybe I can just rewrite it, but, but the, the idea is the same. So we can just do that kind. I, I'll explain a bit, but, but we can just do that kind of business to, to realize this whole symmetry by this geometric method. That, that's a happy case in this single downloading case. We are going to the other case. I want to go to this homotopy method. Now, I'm not so much sure how much people realize this kind of force symmetry using homotopy method. But uh, something I know the following thing. So first thing is this unitarity. So please uh, kind of uh, correct me if, if something is already known uh, other than what I wrote. So the unitarity, there are something called a homotopy unitarity. Here, here we can just replace the uh, unit by homotopy unit. And that, that, that's what we can do. And then and this homotopy unit is uh, strong enough to prove your dilemma. That I think is pretty sure. Um, we, I mean, if the MVD category has homotopy unit, then we can prove your embedding. That, that, that's sure. And uh, a bit more issue is about this weak bounding code chain. So suppose we have only homotopy unit. Then th th there, are, there is a way actually to, to kind of justify this. Is, I think I can just say something like, a, like this homotopy unit is something like a extra things. Uh, you, you can kind of put two more generator. And then this is an actual unit and we can just replace this equation. So we can define the notion of uh, weak bounding code chain. But uh, uh, after, for a while we are uh, kind of working on some explicit example like a toric cases, we use a match on this uh, unit. And what we observe is that uh, using exact unit simplify the story match. I don't say we cannot uh, uh, go with the homotopy unit. It's very likely we can replace everything by homotopy unit, but then we need to write much more and much more complicated and that, that's not so much nice. So it, it might be better to use the exact unit, but, to, but it's, not, uh, uh, it's not so much completely necessary. So probably we can do everything by weak, weak quantum coaching. So this is unitarity. And the device axiom is a bit more subtle. And uh, uh, first of all, I don't know so much about uh, uh, if there is anything written about the homotopy version of the device axiom. That I don't know, and, but uh, I, I will go back to this device axiom soon. And so the cy third thing is this uh, cyclic symmetry. And I think this one is very much uh, well uh, understood in a homotopy theory, homotopy category. There are notions like a Calabial category, AVT category. That is, I think, somehow, homotopy replacement of cyclic symmetry. And I think this uh, uh, homot homotopy infinity thing of the Calabria category is known. 
And in many purpose, maybe all, in, in many purpose where the cyclic symmetry appears, probably people just can you are going to apply their categories. So probably one don't need this exact symmetry, like, but the Calabria category is enough. And to, the, to uh, show that some MVP algebra or MVP category is Calabria is somewhat simpler than proving it is a cyclically symmetry. And the last thing is that the closed open and open closed duality, I think many, in some cases it is established, but I don't know so much. One reason is that many people working on homotopy method using, uh, it works in uh, non-compact cases. Uh, Non-compact cases, uh, uh, you, you know this, uh, but probably there are some something like that, but the Poincaré duality on ambient space does not exist. But there might be some kind of this kind of duality. And since I don't know, so I don't want to talk so much about it. Okay, so now this is uh, about this symmetry. And so I want to go back this, uh, ah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so I want to go back this uh, in a case of this uh, uh, homotopy method. So something I can say is that probably in a homotopy method, it is useful to lift the story to the loop space. So I'll explain why. So you consider this free loop space of L, it's just a map from S1 to L. And you consider this Hochschild chain of, so C, C of L is some chain model of homology. I don't want to specify what. And I want to use also a chain model of homology of the loop space. And uh, from, from this chain model of free loop space, from this chain model of Hochschild uh, cohomology, there is some uh, map. It should be called uh, Shandy, some generalization of Shandy delete integral. In the drum case, this is Shandy delete integral zero. And uh, we have this moduli space of lambda uh, manifold with homology plus beta and k plus one math points. And this, if you just think of it, you take some, some chain model, this gives a Hochschild, it, it gives a chain on this Hochschild complex. It gives a map from the C of L to K to C of L. So, so we get this element here, it, it, it lies here in Hochschild chains. And, uh, and uh, you know, this is a iterative integral. So if you can lift this one to, an, uh, to some chain model of L of L, and you think a bit about this, what the iterative integral is doing, then if you have a chain here, device axiom and unitarity seems to be automatic. Of course, it depends on the choice of chain model, but I, I believe that doing it in this chain model, it, it kind of makes device axiom and unitarity. At least probably the fact that this lift here maybe implies that some kind of version of infinite version, homotopy version of device axiom and unitarity is automatic. So this should be a way to, to, to do homotopic, homotopic argument. And I think this uh, idea wrote some papers about this chain model on string topology chain model on this free loop space. And he could up in certain cases that, uh, I mean, like, like this ambient space is CM, that this, this guy lifts here. So I, I, I believe that this using this, this his, his, his model, one can lift this to in complete generality. And that might give some uh, insights to this uh, unitarity and the device action. But I don't know how much it is known and how much it is done already. And so this is one thing. And the other thing is about the cyclic symmetry, right? And he want to do the cyclic symmetry using this loop space argument. Then you know something, you have this S1 acts on a free loop space. It's a change of parameter. And it is well known that the cyclic symmetry on this Hochschild, uh, 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 Hochschild chain is uh, kind of equivalent to this S1 action on a free loop space. And so I think to, to realize this cyclic symmetry, we need to replace this chain model, or the kind of S1 equivalent chain model. Of this loop space homology. Or well, when it comes to this S1 equivalent version of loop space homology and, and this string topology. And I think uh, the necessary chain model for this S1 equivalent version is not yet known. So yeah, actually, I, I asked Ilya several years ago when he did this work and he can do it in a S1 equivalent way. He said that it's not so much immediate. I don't know if he's interested in it, but 
But I think this is interesting. So if you if you can work out this S1 equivalent version of this cha nice chain model of free loop space, and if you lift this um, uh, this this uh, moduli chain to this S1 equivalent things, this cyclic symmetry is okay. And probably here, yeah, yeah. So now I'm going back to this geometric method. And I want to say a bit about the case when L is uh, immersed and was several L's. That, that's something equivalent. They have several L. And uh, kind of, uh, so Lino Amorin reminded me that it is impossible to realize this four symmetry at the same time if we have immersed or category cases. He mentioned it kind of in a field institute one year ago, just before this pandemic we started. So, um, so uh, first, first was the issue. So, so then uh, what one can do is uh, if we try to realize this first two or three and four, it's possible, but uh, all four seems to be impossible. Actually, that is one of the reasons that this paper I am supposed to write with uh, Muhammad Abzai or Ota Ono. We are mostly, we thought we are mostly finished one year ago, but then this, uh, then I had this issue and I feel that this is a very much serious point. So I want to, uh, I want to kind of clarify this in a kind of very much clear. So I start, to, uh, I am supposed to write that part, but that, so I'm so lazy, so it takes one more year. I hope I can finish, we can finish in the future. But, so this is a kind of point. And so I want to explain the reason why this, this is not true. So I want to explain the reason why this four is possible to realize in a case embedded cases. And the big issue is about the constant map. So we consider this beta and beta zero is uh, zero. And we consider this moduli space. So we have this moduli space. This is a cheating picture. A moduli space of three points and this uh, homology class is zero. But of course, this is cheating because this homology class is zero, so this is just this is not a disk, so it's just a constant map. So you have a constant map, and this modular space of constant map with three map points is actually transversal by itself. And you have this evaluation map at this output parameter, and that is an identity map, and it is submarginal. And this is uh, therefore actually we don't need to perturb constant maps, and this is the reason that we can realize this force symmetry. So I want to say a few words why this is important. So we all have this, we suppose we have this uh, four point mark points, this is G0, G1, G2, G3. And uh, suppose we want to forget this is G2, right? Then, then we have to worry about the following configuration. So this G2 may approach to G1. Then in a, in a limit, you have this uh, picture. You have this picture. And here, you see that this is just, so you, you, have, you, you only have constant maps. So if you want to make this perturbations um, compatible with forget to map, we are not allowed to put any perturbation here. If you, if you perturb here, then this uh, symmetry with forget to map is broken. So the key point to, every, to make this, uh, Forget compatibility with forget to map is just we are not supposed to perturb constant map. That, that, that's a crucial point, and that, that, that's exactly the reason why we can do it. So now we consider the case when L is immersed, and we have, well, we have a several L like this. So we have this intersection point B, and we consider the map U, which is a constant map and just go to this P. And we regard this map from this, this source curve. So you have these three things. So it is this picture. So we have this, this disk with three marked points. And we require that this part go to L1 and this part go to L2, this part go to L1. Then this part go to P and this part go to P and this part go to anywhere in L1. So this is something like that to, to calculate CF L1, L2, tensor CF L2, L1, which goes to 
C of L1, L1. And then uh, you, you observe that this modular space of constant map is again uh, just one point. This, this, this is just one point. Yeah, just, just a unique solution on this modular space. And this one point is actually transversal in this case. However, if you consider this evaluation map from this modular space to L1 at this max point, this is not a submarginal. This is a remarkable volume pointed out to me. So this implies that uh, um, if you want to use drum model, we need to perturb this constant map. That's not so good if you want to achieve cyclic symmetry and compatibility with what we at the same time. So this is not a, this is a, this is a bad case. So that is somehow a problem. And uh, I want to say that there is very similar problem we meet. It's the following things. So we want to put up, uh, we want to study this higher genus or actually higher loop version of the modular space of border uh, curve. Then uh, constant map is not transversal. So this is a map from this uh, uh, disk with uh, one genus and U, and this, this goes to L and this goes to X. And then we require that U is a homology class of zero. Then, so this is kind of genus is one modular space of L zero. And this, this you see, this is actually L itself. Just consists of constant, but maybe times this modular parameter of genus one curve. But uh, this is not correct dimensions. For example, if you fix this uh, uh, modular parameter, so if you fix modular parameter, then this is the uh, dimension is zero. Fix conformal structure of source curve, then this dimension is zero, but this dimension is n. And you just count this guy. By with fixed conformal structure, this number is actually Euler number of L. That, that's, yeah, uh, let me see. I, I'm sorry, so I, I'm thinking very similar but related cases. Probably this is true, but I am thinking the cases of this uh, annuli. Then you call this annuli cases of this uh, L zero with, with fixed conformal structure of annuli, and you count it. This is exactly Euler number of L. That, that is actually easy to prove. But, uh, but you know, and so th th this count is, 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 is rather hard because uh, um, this is non-transversal. And, uh, and you know, this H1 of the annuli or toli is non-trivial. And this is related to the, the previous problem because if you consider this degenerate annuli, you have this kind of, so this kind of disk, so this is a, a kind of limit of the annuli, and you want to count this kind of configurations. Uh, then, um, then, then yeah, the pro problem is uh, that this uh, evaluation, so you have this, this constant map, but the evaluation map at this mass point is not submarginal. So th this configuration is not transversal because uh, this fiber product, which controls this uh, intersection, is not a transversal fiber product. And so we need to put up constant map, constant disks, to have this correct count of the Euler number. And that is actually an issue to have this uh, good picture of this higher genus, higher genus counts. So the, the problem is again, this is how to count these constant maps. And these two are much uh, kind of related. And uh, I have some solutions and that, that's, I don't like so much, but the solution is the following thing. And uh, we distinguish, I think this is forgettable. Right? So forgettable marked points and unforgettable marked points. That looks very strange, but uh, we, 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 we distinguish two different kinds of forgettable mark points and unforgettable mark points. And uh, unforgettable mark points are more symmetric, like a uh, cyclically symmetric. And the forgettable mark point is forgettable. It's, it's compatible with the, uh, the it, it, by forgetting the forgettable mark points. And uh, this, this is very technical solutions, but I don't have any other solution now. So this is the following thing. So suppose we consider this uh, configurations these configurations, so you have this disk, you have this disk, you have this disk, you have this disk, you have this disk. So this is a kind of limit of annuli. 
And then we, then we have just several uh, special points that are double points. And uh, I claim that these three points are unforgettable. On the other hand, these three are forgettable. So, so whenever we consider, so I think we very kind of when we consider this particular, so, so when we consider one of this reducible component like this, you have these situations. You have two red points and one point. In this case, your perturbation should be, uh, it's a, yeah, 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 kind of, you, these two uh, po points are not kind of, you know, the, your perturbation is not compatible with these two points. And this is actually uh, output. So this is also kind of um, not compatible with, for, yeah. So what happened, this is, this is output. So you have this guy and then, then this guy is actually, uh, we don't forget this. So you can actually perturb this constant map. So this is, this, this, this is a bit uh, too much technical, but this, we can perturb this kind of constant map in, 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 this, in this case is, uh, still you don't break this symmetry by a forgetful map. And so th this is a very technical solutions I know. And this is good enough. I mean, why this is good enough is the following thing. Uh, well, one most delicate point about this uh, Hagatul map is uh, about this uh, device axiom and uh, uh, weak bounding co chain. And uh, the device axiom for, uh, for device axiom and weak bounding co chain, we only insert bounding co chain B to the, uh, to, uh, so only insertion of this bounding co chain B is uh, um, important. Bounding. But uh, so, so we, we just decide. So the, for, so when we insert this bounding code chain, we insert only to forgettable marked points. And the actual input of the infinity operations are corresponding to unforgettable marked points. So this looks really technical, but this works actually. And so that is something I'm trying to work, which we are supposed to work out. And this guy go, goes through and this uh, um, MPT structure and also maybe this 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 is useful to to study higher genus cases. So that's something I want to work out. But you know, th so this is only solution I have this at this stage. And I have so 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 what my, I need to think about what are there any other solutions. So something I can say that it might be impossible to resolve this problem about constant map in our higher genus by homotopy method. I, I, I cannot say it is impossible, but there are some reasons I feel it, it might be possible. The reason is the following things. So we consider the count of constant map from higher genus or higher loop border curve to the to the fitch bound on the sum manifold. Then a physicist, I think Witten uh, said 30 years ago that this count is actually perturbative chance time invariant. And we understand what it, how, how it is, but uh, it's not so much universe yet. So what we know is that the perturbative chance time invariant is not a homotopy type, invariant of homotopy type. It knows more than just the homotopy type. And uh, you know, this homotopy method somehow means that uh, replace L by, some ch by, by its chain model. But if you replace L by chain model, it seems likely we forgot chance time invariant. So at least we have to kind of, kind of uh, replace L by some chain model, which you can remember perturbative chance time invariant to, to, to cook up this, uh, uh, to solve this, uh, to, to go higher genus by homotopy method. That I think is a bit hard thing to do. And also about this Poincaré duality things, in, in our business, uh, so you know, Poincaré duality is very much a kind of delicate issue in uh, algebraic topology, because uh, you, you know, this Poincaré duality is not so much invariant of algebraic topology. And, uh, and uh, and also in a Freya theory, we need the Poincaré duality in a chain level. And uh, I learned from people like Zeni Sullivan that the Poincaré duality in a chain level is something like already very close to surgery theory. And you see this uh, book by this, uh, algebraic surgery theory, then they start with some space, some chain complex with the Poincaré duality. And the Poincaré duality in chain model is different, is much deeper than Poincaré duality in, in oncohomology. So you try to realize it, we need probably more on a dimensional topology rather than algebraic topology. So I, I think that this, this very delicate point I just made, uh, explained here, 
might be related to the point when this um, when this uh, uh, story go beyond algebraic topology and enter differential topology. But that, that, that's, that's nothing so solid. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenji. Uh, questions? Yeah, actually, Kenji, I have some question. Uh, uh, it's, um, can you comment on the work, work of Vito Yakovina? He claims that he has this perturbative of Chan Simons invariant and so on, but using some not only uh, maps from surfaces but also some graphs. And he, yeah. uh, he said and he has it. Vito Yakovina, he's a student of Yao. Ah. He has some a couple of papers on archive, and it's kind of different approach. He says that he immediately gets this Chan Simons invariant with all, all transversality I, problems. I, I, I look one of his papers. Yeah. But that I, 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 I think I can see how to real, how to make it remove us. That, that paper yeah. I quote, yeah. and I look the next papers. That's yeah. about this higher genus cases. Yeah, of higher genus exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and he, 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 he said something like that. Uh, you have some distributions which which lies on this diagram now, mm. and he says that he can regularize it. And after regularizing, he got some finite number, and then he gets something very defined. That that basically what he said. Yeah. And he didn't say how he regularized this diagonal. Yeah. And in my opinion, the way to regularize this diagonal is a fault problem. And so I, I, I don't believe this paper. Uh, he might have some more, 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 something more, but he don't write anything how to regularize the diagonal. Yeah, and also probably, you know, in deformation quantization, uh, there was some kind of propagators and there was a very delicate equation about some Work of uh, uh, Alexeyev, uh, Dresan, and uh, and um, maybe Wilwacher. It was a very very delicate work with perturbation theory and uh, with distributions. Eventually, they got kind of all stocks. I need stocks formulas, but not on the nose. Yeah, it was, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for all that kind of things, I, I I hope I might use this kind of techniques. Yeah. For example, for the chance time itself. If you, if you look at this uh, Costello's book, he, he do something like a homological algebra, right? You can, he, he, yeah. he, he, they normalize and do, to, to prove some vanishing of homologies to cook up this kind of higher contributions. And I think this, this uh, higher contribution he cook up is actually a virtual fundamental chain of this uh, drum model yeah. of uh, yeah. this multiple spaces. So, so I don't know the, the, the particular work you mentioned, but you can kind of, understand this kind of uh, uh, terms as the kind of fundamental class of certain, certain moduli spaces, yeah. then we can apply this technique. Okay. Other questions? Uh, hi, Kenji. I had a comment and a question. Uh, so first, a comment um, uh, about um, one one reference comment I uh, about OCCO duality uh, in using the homotopy method. I think for compact symplectic manifolds, for for mo in the monotone or Fano case, um, this OCCO duality is in Nick Sheridan's Fano hypersurfaces paper. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of the comment I wanted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, uh, he he only shows it on homology. So I think the it's it's weaker because you can't show duality on the chain level, just on homology level. Yes, yes, but um, he needs only that case, right? Sorry? But he needs only that case, right? Yes, he, exactly. He needs that kind of homology right? He that's that. right, that's right. Uh, and, and then my question was, um, I had a question about this Chen's iterated integrals point of view. Um, so I, I think there was a comment you made that if you could factor mk plus one uh, through the loop space, then yes. some of these properties would be automatic. Um, this unitality and divisor axiom, is that because the Chen's iterated integrals themselves satisfy that in some sense? Yes, or? yes, yes. I mean, you look at the hardest Chen iterated integrals, and you just think, you know, it, it depends on the choice of chain model, actually, so it's more delicate. But suppose you have some cycles on a, on a free loop space, then by chain iterated integrals, it gives an element of Hoshi the chain complex of drum complex. And you look at the definition of chain iterated integral, it satisfies these kinds of things. I think the device structure is quite obvious. Uh -huh. Thanks. Any more questions? OK, I'm going to stop recording. And uh, thanks, Kenji, again. And we have a break of 55 minutes. And we will resume with Mandy at 2 o'clock.